Beck coming to you from Wellington, New Zealand at Cat Stitch. Uh, today is Sunday the 8th of May 2022 and this is floss tube number, I don't know, up to number 5? What do you reckon? 5? Maybe 6? Already I've lost count and I haven't really done that many but there you go. Um, for those that are new to the, uh, to the channel, thank you very much for stopping on by. Uh, I do tend to ramble on occasion. Bobby makes an appearance. As you can see, he's shoving me off my new chair. Um, <laughs> it's apparently his chair. I'm coming to you from my new, what I call my zen room. And I call it a zen room rather than a craft room because I won't just be doing craft in here. I'll be reading or, you know, just relaxing, colouring in or making some jewellery or, you know, something like that when I get my workstation set up. Um... I call it a zen room because it's my happy place, so I will be gradually doing bits and pieces in here um, to create my little nook, my little, I've actually created a little, starting to create a little fairy garden, a little fairy scene, so I'll just sort of switch you around. As you can see, now please note, the plants are not real. I kill plants. It doesn't matter whether they're cactus or even those ones that live on air. I still manage to kill them. So, but I love plants. So I found these lovely ones and I'm going to do, one of the ones I'm going to show you today is going to get put right there. Um, so I'll show you that. So let's bring it back around if I can just get the camera to behave itself. Okay. And of course you're tilted. So let's, let's try and level you up a little bit. There we go. For those that are coming back, Welcome to the madness. Bobby has, as you can see, already taken position and just as well it's a wide chair because otherwise his wedge of a butt would kick me off it. Um, Monkey is sort of guarding the door so he might make an appearance at some point. It's a little bit different than, you know, doing these when sitting on the bed because there's all this space around me. Well, <laughs> so so they, they quite often come up but I don't know what monkey's going to be like today in regards to that. He might do a bit of yakking, but we'll see how we go. Um, if he doesn't come up before the end of the show, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I did last time and get him to jump on up. Now, there's not a lot that's um, been achieved this week, in all honesty. This week sort of threw me a loop. It was my first week back in the office um, all year. And um, in case you're not aware, I have social anxiety disorder. So basically I need to leave the house within 10, 15 minutes of being ready to go somewhere. Otherwise I struggle to go. Um, so of course I get to work early uh, and, and things like that. It was very overwhelming. It was loud. It was bright. It was just too many people. The energy was just, you know, just too many um, so it was quite overwhelming. So each night when I got home from work, I pretty much went to sleep. I'd tried doing a few stitches and I'd be dozing off. So if the camera moves, it's because Monkey has decided he wants to play in the area at the bottom of the camera stand. Um, so yeah, so I didn't get as much done as I thought I would be able to do. I've also decided mania is not for me. I'm not good with constructive um, planning for stitching. I stitch to my mood. And I have recently started being curious about non-Halloween-y things. Oh, I know, shocker, isn't it? Halloween is always going to be my first love for stitching, and I'll always do that as a primary. Um, but I'm starting to incorporate some other ones. So... I mean, not just my salt, salt box houses and things like that, but I've got a few other ones. Um, I've done two new starts this week. Nearly got a salt box finished, um, but I just yeah, didn't quite make it. I've got another couple of hundred stitches on. I did think of making this, this video, you know, even later in the day, but, you know, to try and finish it. But I sort of thought, oh, it'll be finished next week, so it'll make me feel good. Um, and I got a bit of haul. Um, again, not all of it is stitchy related, um, but it, well, it's st stitchy adjacent because it's crafty things 
for me to be able to like a lot of the, the little fairy ornaments and stuff like that that came this week so you've already seen those but um the finishing things uh you know little ornaments and you know, you know just stuff like that more fabrics and, and that sort of thing plus i brought a few new charts because you know 2000 ain't enough you can always have room for more but the reason i brought the charts is because I had a specific thing in mind that I want to do. I'm 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 a coffee nut. I love my coffee. Um, I'm not a coffee snob. Quite frankly, I'll just about drink any ready coffee if I need the caffeine. Um, but I sort of thought I want to do some more coffee themed cross stitching. So I brought a few charts of Etsy um, to go because when I started doing the cafe latte from Little House Needlework, I was thinking. I want a whole array of coffee things. I want a little coffee corner sort of thing where I can put, you know, maybe, I don't know, I'm sure I'll find some little ornaments or stuff like that in regards to coffee, just to sort of make a little coffee nook. Uh, when I had my little, we called it the shed, I, well, I called it the cabin, other people called it the shed. When I had that and it was, you know, apart from the fact there was no running water, I lived in it for two years. Um, you know, the back door was close enough. I could get to the house when needed. Um, but I had created, because I'm such a coffee nut, a little coffee bar in there. So that I had my coffee and my jug and, and my coffee machine thingy and, and stuff like that. You know, as a primary spot. It's like nothing else got put on that particular little nook. And I just sort of thought it'd be really cool maybe to create something like that again. Because um, that, was, that was quite fun. Okay, so shall we get on with that? Should we make a start? Bobby's had a, a bit of a lonely week. He's He's been a, a little sad this week because I've been at home so often and before when I had to go into the office, we had Inca here who was Bobby's mate and we lost her at Christmas time. So this is his first time ever being at home alone he's always had another doggy mate um around so it's been a hard week for him so admittedly he has been spoiled a little more than he probably should have uh which is why he's put a little bit of weight back on again but you know um makes him feel better does not it yeah and we um <laughs> had a bath on uh friday and, and that sort of thing. Oh, the other reason I'm late this morning, or this after, today, because it's now in the afternoon, um, is I actually woke up with a major migraine, and it didn't help that my flatmate was mowing the lawns. Um, so I had to have a few pills and just go back to sleep for a bit to get rid of that. But let's have a look uh, at what I started this week. So I was only going to start one project, and then I just sort of thought, whoa. Yeah, we might need to start too. So, let me just get these put aside. Whoops, don't drop. Okay, so first was the Little, <laughs> little House Needleworks. Bobby is determined to shove me over. Aren't you? Just, don't look at me like that. Um, okay, so Little House Needleworks. So, I'm starting with this one down the bottom here cafe latte because that's the main one i drink i love my lattes um i don't know if i'll do cappuccino i might do the frappuccino though i'm not a huge cappuccino fan in all honesty um so i started this on um sunday night and i did about i think it was about 700 and 50 stitches to start so it's just okay so there we go okay and that's where I'm up to I'm stitching this on Ada 14 count Rustico um, I just sort of thought it was a really nice one to use for coffee. So because I'm starting to do all these coffee ones, I might have to get some more of it. Because, I mean, if I'm going to do the other ones, I've got enough room for the you know, for the frappuccino. And 
I might have room for you know for all three on this I think because I will probably turn them into flats I was trying to I've been trying to work out am I making pillows or flats out of these in the salt boxes and I keep changing my mind which is why neither one of them like I was thinking I might get the winter one done so you know, I can, you know I finished stitching it last week that's why I thought I, I'll, I'll fin you know, fully finish it, but I kept changing my mind. Um, I built whether I was going to make it a flat one and have it so that I can alternate, um, especially as the majority of the house ones I'm doing is like a seasonal. So I've done the winter, um, I'm working on the spring one, which is Aunt Bee's. I've, no, I'm not. What's Aunt Bee's? Aunt Bee's the summer one. Um, I've got the spring green one that I've got pulled out for this week. Then there's the, the two autumn ones, one's the Halloween one and one's um, the autumn salt box. So I was thinking maybe I should make them flat and you know do the magnet thing where I can switch them out on one of my my slat board things. When originally I was going to make them into pillows. So now I've stopped because I don't want to make them one way and then sort of think dang it I wanted to do it the other way. And now I'm having the same quandary with my coffee. Because I was originally thinking flat fold, but now I'm thinking, well, if I'm only going to do one or two of them, I could make them into little little pillows. Hopefully, by the time I finish stitching it, I'll know what I'm going to do with it. Um, now, I am using the called for colours for this. They're the Colourworks Classics. So we have got Peapod, Secondhand Rose. They're such lovely colours. Mistletoe, black coffee, which is a lot more brown than I expected, <laughs> uh, mulberries, trying to get that so I can get it clear. Deep blue sea, which is on the one I'm using at the moment. Oops. Cocoa bean. If I can get it to there we go. Ruby slippers. I know I've had this one before, I just can't remember what I used it on. Blueberry tart. Which is a lot lighter than I sort of expected it to be. I expected it to be a lot darker when it's a blueberry, but there you go. Aunt Marie's Violet. Bamboo, which again, I thought would be a bit more yellowy coloured, but it's more white and cream. And House Wine. Now, not all of them are getting used on latte. In fact, these are the ones for all three. So if I choose not to do one of them, one of these colours may not be getting used. But that's okay. Uh, I've actually ordered some more bits and pieces from Australia. So it may, it, they won't be here probably until the end of the month um, or anything like that because our postage system is, is wonderfully super speedy. The other one I started was another primitive hair. I gotta admit I'm liking them. And again it was in a just cross stitch magazine. It was in I think it was October 2013, I think. I oh, know it was in the Halloween 2014 one. Just just cross stitch magazine Halloween 2014 special. So the witchy tea time. Now this I have had floating in my folders for at least 18 months. And I kept on saying, yeah, 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 and I never get around to it. I'm doing it. Now the calls for colours in it, if I just have a look. There we go. That's what I wanted. So the called for colours were black, which was fine, 3012 DMC, which is a khaki green, and then a Rome, Romy's Creation, um, 
and interestingly enough, it says, you know, um, DMC alter alternative listed in parentheses, none. So I was like, right. Okay then, well, what the heck? Um, and that just about stopped me doing it. And then I sort of thought, yeah, hang on. I've got all these lovely over-dyed threads. So let's make use of them. So um, I've done about... 1500 stitches, oh no, 1650 stitches um, on this one. So there we go. So I've made a start. I'm just actually doing this on um, just uh, an ECRU 14 count Ada. I don't know what's happened with my mood at the moment. I'm just looking for some really basic coloring at the moment instead of these lovely bright ones and I do love using them I still love using all those beautiful fabrics I'm just in a muted mode at the moment so what I ended up switching out um, instead of using the uh, khaki green and we're talking about on the W uh, it's supposed to be a khaki green that instead is uh, Gentle Arts Moss, which is that one. So I used that one instead of the khaki green. And there, hopefully, you can see that all right. I should have put a board behind it. And then instead of the Romy, which <laughs> there was no alternative, I had looked to sort of see, well, what sort of color is it? And I looked an orangey sort of color, and I thought, well, I'm sure I've got something in my Gentle Arts stash. So, because I, I wanted to sort of have both of them. Um, both of the alternatives in the same brand, I suppose. So if you have a look. Okay, so there it is there. So for this one, I used Bittersweet from um, Gentle Arts. So that's that one there. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, and I'm quite happy with the progress. i got to admit, it's a little bigger... <laughs> than I thought it was going to be and I'm like right well that's that's fine that might be one of my bigger projects um, and I'm just going to keep on plugging away on that one now see I'm jumping around all over the place again in regards to the mania I've decided I ain't sticking to no routine or rhyme or rhythm I'm going to I've picked out a bunch of charts and I've actually printed them up so usually when I when I print up, I just print the front cover and then that goes into a folder of ones to choose from. And then when I'm going to do it, I print up the whole chart. So I sort of thought, right, I'm printing up some charts. So I'll get to that next. Now, here is where I was up to on Aunt B's summer house. Um, as you can see, I'd only just started adding colour. I'm about... I just have four colours left to put into it to finish off the black, do the rest of the bright yellow, add the alternative colour, and a little bit more green, I believe, and a couple of back stitches, and then she's done. So I'm hoping to do her this afternoon, hoping. So that's what she looks like now. I'm quite pleased with it. I can't believe how many colour changes there are. And, and stuff like that. So once I got the main house done, and I started having to change colour, change colour, I thought, right, forget this. We're going to do all of the colour. And then once we're done, we're going to take it out of the bag. And, you know, the, the bag that I've got the rest of the um, threads in. And we're going to put it back into the um, salt box bag. Because a lot of the colours are shared between all the salt boxes. And then that way I can at least get an idea of how many more colours I've got to go. So that's why I know I've got four left. So um, yesterday I stitched, um, I've done about 1300 stitches on it to get to this point. And I've still got probably another two or 300 stitches to go. Maybe 400 stitches to go. Didn't look like there was that much left. But there is. 
Um, one of my lovely. Is that everything? Oh, actually, we'll do the stashy part later. So the ones that I've pulled out and, and I'll tell you which ones I've just purchased <laughs> as well. Now this one I just about brought again, as I said last time, I think, and that is from Happy Point, the Halloween sampler. All right, so I've printed her up properly. She's all ready to go. Uh, Happy Mood Point, I should say. Um, also had this one as a as a sampler. And now, like I said, I don't usually do samplers, but I don't mind the ones that aren't full of, of the alphabet. It's the alphabet thing that does me. I'm, I'm like, how many times do I need to stitch an alphabet? But I admire what others have done with it. You know, when I see theirs, I think, aren't they beautiful and stuff? It's just not something that... No. But coffee. I'll stitch coffee. So, Happy Mood Point had this one on Etsy. And so I grabbed this um, earlier this week. And then I was... <laughs> The thing that sort of got me thinking about coffee, um, not only from when I saw um, the Coffee Time Trio um, up for grabs in a D-Stash page, but I was watching Floss Tube Tiny House Stitcher. I mean, I, I would love a tiny house. Um, yes, monkey. Okay. Really? Okay. Um she did a really really cool one for her sister uh it was a coffee one obviously and i looked at it and I, I i watched that particular episode a couple of times and each time i saw it i kept on thinking i want that chart i'm, I'm gonna have to go and look for that chart it's just um i want to do this and i want to have it on my desk at work <laughs> there's a couple my desk is going to have a few uh, little cross stitches because there's like a little screen sort of thing that goes around like that and so I'm going to have a couple of these small ones sort of attached to it. Um, coffee spelled backwards is Efok. Just no, I don't give Efok until I've had my coffee. I'm not, I don't know, if, I don't think I'll be doing it in the same colours. Uh, Tiny House Stitcher, she didn't uh, do them in, in the calls for colours. She personalised it. I'll probably be doing the same. Um, but I just, so that's on my list of ones to start this month. This one is also going to be going up at work. Um, it is by Tango Stitch from Etsy. I run on coffee and sarcasm. See, I've got a, I've got a new manager, new team, new area that I'm sitting in. It's so it's been quite an overwhelming week for me, um, and it's just you know thank goodness for cross stitch because I think that's the only thing that's made things bearable because it's given me something else to focus on. I'm starting to take my cross stitch to work with me uh, each day, and I just go down to my car, which is parked in the parking building, and I may not stitch, but I'll pull it out and I'll have a look at it, and it helps calm me. This one is by Veil Stitchery. It's also on Etsy. <laughs> and it made me giggle, which is why I want to do it. Plus it's got a black cat. And it's like, well, hello, I've got to do it. So here it is here. It is very cool. First copy, then I rule the world. Why not? Um, and I just sort of thought, would you count the black cat as a Halloween part? Maybe that will come into the category of Halloween. I don't know. Then I shopped the system and I got one from Flow Reen Studio. Again, they don't put their name on the chart, so I had to quickly go and look up these before I, I did the recording. I just wanted to get maybe one little Christmassy one that might not be too much of a nightmare to do. And I don't know if I'm going to even do them together. I might do each one as an individual um, instead of on the same one. So I just sort of thought that was quite cute. Um, but there's enough of a gap between the two of them that I could probably do them on two separate ones like two little ornaments for the tree I love gnomes I do, I'm a gnomey girl um, and 
uh, on the Jodie redesigns, I'm on the Zodiac Gnomes, which um, I got another one this this month was the Gemini, and yeah, I love it. Um, have I started stitching any more gnomes yet? No, so I want to start stitching gnomes. But I got these ones from Zimmerina Alexandra. Gosh, I hope I said that right. Um, I got, and that's on Etsy. So I've got the Gnome Chef, because I love my baking, um, and that sort of thing. So I got him, and I also loved the Gnome with Mushrooms, because I love mushrooms. <laughs> I can't eat them, I'm allergic to them, but I just think they're really cute, you know. So I got the Gnome with Mushrooms. These are all going to be started this month. Um, now I got this one from, it's called Colors Mode, C-O-L-O-R-S, so the American spelling, um, Mode on Etsy, and it's just a Halloween bookmark. I just thought she was really cute, you know, and famous last words, she's not going to take too long to stitch. Um, I don't know about you, but have you ever noticed it seems to take... So much longer to stitch these little ones <laughs> than it does the big ones. Um, you just seem to be working on it for days. Now the one that I'm going to be stitching that's going to go behind my little plant, my little fake plants, is of course from the Witchy Stitcher plant killer. Um, I have been, I've had this in my folders for ages, um, or in my UCB drive for ages, and I'm like. I really need to do that, really need to do that. Well, now I've got the perfect location that it's going to get put up um, when I stitch it. So that's definitely getting started this month. I thought <laughs> this one I'm going to do again for my work, um, for my desk at work. Again from the Witchy Stitcher, uh, the Antisocial anti Butterfly is me. Um, I just, yeah, I thought that's me. I'm undecided about this one, so I don't know if this will get started this month, but I pulled it and printed it just in, just in case. Um, whether it's because it's just been a really emotional month uh, for me or not, and, what, and you know, maybe that's why I've chosen it. Maybe that's why my style is changing. Well, not changing, but taking a hiatus from Halloween focus. Again, Witchy Stitcher, just bottle that emotion shit right up. <laughs> Um, from Just Cross Stitch Magazine, to say which one, Halloween 2013, I've had the cover of this printed up since I first saw it, I just sort of thought this is really cool, I just need to get a lot more of like that Rustico fabric, um, because I'm going to do a bunch of these on very neutral sort of tones, because I want to use the colour colours. Although I do have more white Ada, so I might just tea dye it or coffee dye it or something like that. Um, I've had a look at a lot of different Edgar Allan Poe, Nevermores and, and things like that charts. There's been a lot. There, there are hundreds of different Nevermore designs out there. This is the one that just keeps on calling me back. Um, I like the simplicity of it. And the very neutral minimalistic colouring and and stuff like that but still that splash of colour rather than just black. I'm going to attempt to do something from Notorious Needle and that is the 3D Haunted House so that's on perforated plastic. Um, maybe I'm going to attempt it. I don't know. Um, again that's an undecided one. I thought, with all the coffee ones I'm doing, I need a coffee shop. <laughs> so I got this from Mr. Stitch and Mrs. Needle on Etsy. I just thought that was really cute. I don't think I'm going to be doing a green um, building, though. I'm not a huge green fan. I might make it, I don't know, blue or purple or something else. But I'm not, it's probably not going to be green. Um, I understand the green and the brown go nicely together, but... No, I wouldn't go into a green shop. 
And then um, there are a couple, but the other page didn't print. Um, that I'm doing from Luba Davies Atelier, um, starting another couple of hers, even though I've still got, what, three of hers to finish. Um, the best is yet to come. And then the other one I'm going to do is Dreams Don't Work Unless You Do, or... Oh, I've forgotten the other one. So those are my picks to start this month. Those are all going to be my new starts, basically. Um, and in between, I'm going to be working on my salt boxes to complete those. I'm not planning on completing any of those. They're all going to be whips to, to take forward. Um, you'll see behind me my bags and stuff, which have my whips and my catted projects. So you're wondering... Why choose more? Because I don't know if I'm going to be keeping those. I don't know if I'm not going to. I'm not going to get rid of them right now because I don't know whether this is just a phase thing. Um, it's almost like on the verge of losing Stitchy Mojo, so I want to not have that happen. Because last year it happened, and it lasted for a couple of months, a good couple of months, where I just no urge to stitch um so i sort of thought okay starting to feel that a little bit now um so let's try to give it a kick in the butt and, and see what we can do i'm trying to sort of not have it so that my glasses have the ring because i'm just sort of noticing the ring popping up in it and i don't know how to change that so now um just need coffee just a second I made this when I first woke up and had my migraine um, and then I had to sleep. So this has been, that's why I like the thermal cups because, I, you know, even when I'm, you know, I'll get, I'll get stitching for a while and I completely forget about the coffee. The thermal cups keep it warm for like four or five hours. It's brilliant. Because um, I hate reheated coffee. So I'll, I'll drink it cold. You know, I'll just regard it as an iced coffee if it goes cold, but it's still warm. So... Um, I'll just show you a few things that I've brought into here. So I was born in the year of the rat. So of course, um, I've got my little rat friends. They tend to go most places with me. Uh, they're from Thai beanie babies, T Y beanie babies. Thai. Um, I don't know. I remember when I used to sell them in my store. There was always a dis discussion over whether it's Thai or Thai or, or T-Y, um, depending on who you were talking to, depending on what it got called. The other one that I kept, um, I have got most of the Canadian exclusives. I've got the th three or four German exclusives, um, which I've kept, but pretty much the rest of my ties have gone, although there was one that I had sent over to a lady in the States and she had embroidered it with cat's gifts and little pumpkin and stuff like that, which was my gift shop. Um, so she personalized it for me. Um, and so I had that and I also had um, a few little angel ones, which I think are still in their boxes. So uh, there's so much stuff I'm finding. But this one here, not just is he my frog and that's why he suits being in this room. Um, but the birth date, because all of them have different birth dates on them. The birth date on this one is the same as my granddad's. So that's why this frog has always been very important because it's my dad, my, my, my granddad, um, sort of sitting on my shoulder, as it were. So he had to come into here. He was just like, well, you've got to go into the Zen. Um, now, this this little guy here, this little, this little gecko, little lizard, whatever you want to call him, I've had him for well, since two thousand and since two thousand and one. When I brought my gift shop, it was a it, it was already a gift shop, but more souvenir sort of stuff and, and that sort of thing. And one of the products that they had were all these little you know little lizards. Little, it's full it's filled with sand, so it's quite weighty. And um, I remember grabbing one and taking it into the office, and into my little office, and had it sort of sitting over my computer. 
and it's actually gone with me everywhere. Everywhere I've gone, this ruddy lizard has made the trip with me. It's moved multiple times, never, you know, I don't know whether I'd be like a kid losing a toy, you know, favourite toy or whatever if I lost him, but, you know, every time I, I unpack him from wherever, you know, I'm unpacking him from, it's really cool to see him. Just say, hey dude, nice to see you. So he's actually been in my bedroom um, since we got here three years ago. So now he's in my zen room. He's used to being in the zen room, aren't you? And I'll put you near the plants. That's right. I talk to my bears. I talk to my critters. I enjoy doing that. Right, on to stash. Now I'm going to start on this side first. That one I want to have a discussion about. Um, now, I got a lovely order from Ribbon Rose. I went back and I ordered some of those fabrics. So I ordered the um, a bigger one of the doors and windows. And I ordered a bigger piece of the, um, the beautiful leaves, which I really loved. And then I was thinking about what other projects I'm working on. And when I was having a look at my, my stash of fabrics, a lot of them are very sort of Halloween-y themed ones. I don't really have anything that might suit a summer, autumn, um, you know, well, summer, winter, spring, um, or those sorts of ones. So I sort of thought, well, might as well get a bit more so that I've, I've got the stuff here for what I want to do. So the winter salt box one, I was thinking that might be the fabric that I will use as the background, whether it's going to be the background on the board um, or whether it's going to be the background of the pillow, you know, the, the backing of the pillow. Don't know yet, but I'm thinking snowflakes because it was a winter one and I got enough because of, there's another winter one to do as well. And so I sort of thought, well, soon there's two of them, I'll have them both backed the same with the same fabric. Queen Bee the one that I'm working on at the moment. Do you know how hard it is to find, um, you know, nice bee fabric or, you know, stuff like that to be able to... I was, like, really struggling. But I found this one. And so I thought, right, well, you know what? She is going to be whatever the backing is. Whether I make it a, a, tri a, a, a flat fold or make it a cushion, that's going to be my fabric, my bumblebee. Um... But because I wasn't sure about it, I got a nice yellow. <laughs> Just to be honest, in case maybe I want to do three layers, who knows. Um, we'll see what I come up with when I'm doing it. And then for the spring green salt box, I couldn't make up my mind. So I got both of these. Which I thought were quite lovely. You know, I thought, I suppose it depends on how I'm going to finish them. That's the thing. If it's going to be a, a little pillow, it might be this one to go on the back. If it's going to be a flat fold, it might be this one to go on the back. So, you know. Um, and even though I've got enough Halloween-y ones and I really don't need any more, I just sort of thought, well, these are really lovely. And because I'm doing um, the Will-O-Wisp in the Autumn House, I thought maybe I... <laughs> I don't have anything exactly like this. So, you know, so I got that one there and that one there. So I got the green version as well and I got the brown version of this. I just thought it was really cool. It was very wood look sort of thing. And speaking of wood look, um, oh, browns, we'll go with the browns. So there's the brown version and the swirl of the brown version. How do you do this? Here we go. We'll do it that way. So lovely colours. And then I wanted something that was sort of like a wood look. Um, I can't remember what one I was gonna what I was thinking of it for. That's gonna annoy me. But I know there was a reason when I saw it and why I was looking for it. So I got this one here. It's got a little bit of purple to it, a little purple tinge to it but it's really lovely and it looks like bark on a tree so that's why I got that one and then 
I had to get I wanted to get something with dragons on for that dragon without my coffee which is gonna come up again uh, in a mo because there was an issue that I've discovered um, so I got this one it's just a nice simple little one um, because I'm thinking that's gonna be a wall hanging rather than framing again I, need, I still need to learn how to use my sewing machine and then the last two I just thought were really lovely <laughs> So I got these two as well. They both have a little bit of shine to them. Um, and I just sort of thought, well, we'll, we'll get those two because, you know, you can never have enough fabric. They're all only about um, they're only about, you know, seven or eight inches. So they're not huge, you know, um, and, and stuff like that. They're just who knows, maybe I'll get into quilting as well, just to really go down a rabbit hole. Um, I'd have to look, I really have to learn how to use that sewing machine. So, <laughs> put those over there. Um, a few other bits and pieces that I got this week. So, also from Ribbon Rose, um, the cards that I had, um, to do like my flat folds and stuff like that I only had four by six and five by seven I wanted like square ones I mean I know I could have you know cut them all and made them square and and but I didn't want to I, wa <laughs> I wanted ones that were already square um so they had these and it's a pack of 25 um so that that should you know help with what I'm gonna do um, I also got, oops, try to drop them, so I got a few of these, these are all 5 by 7s but they're sticky, so I'm going to work out on something on that. Um, I got a few more stickers or iron-on things, so I got like my letter K, that's going to go on my journal. Um, I got an iron-on transfer of a cat because I'm thinking I always thought when doing the pillow design that you sort of like do most of the edge when you when you're putting the two sides together you do most of the edge leave a little gap at the at, you know on one side stuff it and then hand sew that thing and yet I've seen a lot of floss tubes showing that you stitch the entire square round and then you snip a little hole in the back stuff it and then stitch that closed and cover the back you know that the, where the hole was with I don't know ribbon or a patch or something like that so I sort of thought maybe I'll get a couple of those and, you know so if I decide to try that particular method um <laughs> I've got a couple of patches so there's a cat because I know that chances are I'm going to do something that's going to require a cat on it in fact I have a couple in mind and I was thinking if Aunt B decides to become a a pillow and I do it that method that can go on the back I thought she was gorgeous um and then I got some masks because I don't know why they just look really cute and here we go and then I thought well if I'm going to make it anything whether it's going to be hanging as a as a flat fold you know as a flat or a or whatever you have the bow on the front or, or you know the trim whatever and then you have some little button or something so I've got these little bumblebees. They're very cute. Um, so I might have to look for a few more bee charts so that I can, I can, I can use my, my bumblebees. Um, other bits and pieces I got were I got some bells, um, a couple of different sizes. I got some little flowers that I can use for decorating. One has glitter on it. It's dropping glitter everywhere, which is like, you know, you just never get rid of glitter. I don't have a problem with that. Um, excuse the noise. Now, we don't have a place like Just Another Button Company in New Zealand. At least I haven't found one. And so I look at all these beautiful buttons that are available over there, and I'd love to get them. But the cost of getting them here just makes it, you know, no way can anyone, you know, that, you know just not affordable at all. So, um, but I've managed to find these. Most of them, um, I well, a few of them I got from Ribbon Rose. Some I got from Pete's Emporium in Lower Hutt. Um, 
and I just sort of thought, well, it's a good start, and I'm sure I'll be able to make use of these buttons and things like that. So we've got little Christmas um, ornaments. We've got snowflakes. More snowflakes. Dragons. Which are very cute. Um, sheep. And I'm thinking of these for like the spring house one because it's got sheep on it. <laughs> um, mushrooms, because I've got a few designs with mushrooms in. So little mushroom buttons. Of course, bumblebees, because you know I hadn't found those other ones when I when I saw these. So um, just little bees. I love owls, so I got the owls just in case because I actually I do have a couple of designs with owls that I've already done. So um, again, some mushrooms, little mushroom houses, and little bird houses because I've actually got a haunted bird house one, so that might actually come in handy. Um, some farm animals. So those are the buttons that I've managed to, to catch. I'm wanting to do some of my completes as like wall hangings. And I've watched YouTube videos, or floss tube videos. You know, they put these weights down the bottom or... or <sighs> I was watching Caterpillar Stitching do one and she put like a cord down the bottom which was quite heavy. Do you think I can find any cord like that in New Zealand? No. Um, so I went looking on, on Google to sort of see, you know, curtain weights or stuff like that. And people would talk about penny weights and using a washer and sewing it in. And then someone would mention, oh, yeah, but it does mark it, blah, blah, blah. And so when I was at Pete's Emporium, I asked them if she had something like penny weight. And she mentioned the washers. So I got a few washers just to, you know, just to be on the safe side. But she also mentioned fishing sinkers. And you can just tack them in because there's a hole in the middle of them. So you can just tack them at each corner down the bottom. So I got a few of those. Just little ones. Whether they're going to work, I don't know because I'm still learning. Um, I also got some twine because um, hemp cord. Because I've seen a few getting finished with, with things like that. So um, I think these were for my little fairy thing. Just some little logs. Sawn logs. I'll figure out what to do with those later. I also increased my stickers. So I got some, basically some blackboard ones. I got some butterflies. Some owls. Now, can I just point out to my... American friends and, and Canadian friends who have access to things like Dollar Store and Dollar Tree and whatever else they are and we don't get them for a dollar. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, they're not that cheap. I got some alphabets. Some lovely framey sort of ones I can use for framing in my journal. Um, these are the Dreamcatcher design. Some border designs. Another alphabet. And these are hemp and oh, these are burlap. Little tags. So have I started my journal yet? No, of course not. Don't be silly. <laughs> One of those weeks. I also got a few more of my um, gorgeous girls. Uh, stamps, that one, that one, I'm sorry the price tag's in the way, now these are, I got from Ribbon Rose, and I still have yet to get a stamp pad, now unfortunately the price sticker was over her face when I was mowing me, but there we go, so I got those, and then on the D-Stash group, 
um, I was offered the chance to get this and I was like yes please so this arrived spellbound and I made a discovery not a happy discovery so the designs in here are by Jeanette Cruz and you know we always hear about how people rip off designs and you know all that sort of thing I've now discovered why one of the Etsy sellers of a chart that I completed is not on there must be the reason because does this look familiar let's see if I can get the doesn't that dragon look very very familiar in the phrase why does it look familiar because that's the one that I finished on my you know on my birthday so that you got to admit, it's the same damn dragon. Um, and exactly the same sort of phrase. So, colour me... Whoops! Colour me a bit miffed. That, um, that, that happened. Sorry, I'm just going to get the light back up because it's holding it falling down. So that didn't... I mean, I love the book. They have got some really cool designs in it. Um, let's see if I can zoom in on any of the other ones. Here we go. Let me try and get it so you can actually see the designs. So there are some very cute designs in this, in all honesty. So I've already picked out a few that I want to do. So, yeah. So... Any fans of Jeanette Cruz designs, big apologies. Um, if I'd known it was a a fake, I mean a, a whatever, would never have bought it. So apologies. Um, the other one is is a is a more positive one. Um, I got this from Mighty Ape in New Zealand. It was their last copy, I think. I'd seen it mentioned. On Facebook and you know people were doing charts out of it I was thinking I want to I want to have a look at that book <laughs> I, I would I tried finding like a flip through um, to see what other charts there were in it but I couldn't find a flip through for it so I took the plunge and I bought the book anyway because the designs that I had seen done I quite liked so from um, Lindsay Swearingen Creator of Tusk and Cardinal. Creepy cross stitch. I was very excited. Um, cross stitch goes witchy with dark and elegant designs, is what it's got on the back. Um, so I thought I would do sort of a, a little bit of a flip through um, and be very careful not to show any of the actual chart. Um, I love it how she's called her cat little brother. That is just so cool. Okay, so we have got... There are definitely a few that I am going to be doing. Um, I love the rat. I had a pet rat. He was a hooded rat named Harry. And I loved him. He was so cool. And it's got, you know, techniques, um, how to frame cross stitch in a hoop, um, and that sort of thing. So there's this one, Springtime in the Graveyard. Thistles and Bones. Oops. I'm going to be blanking that part out. I just realised it was the wrong page. Um, here we go. Oh my god. Thistles and bones. Here we go, that's better. So 
some of these charts are going to be very fun for me to read because they're all like a black background um, and because I don't stitch on black it's going to be interesting. This one's uh, Lover's Graves. It's a beautiful book. Um, <laughs> Dead Berries. Illuminated Ghoul. This is the one that's on the front page, which I really do love. Monkey's decided to hide in the box that's in here. Next section is Haunted Homes, so former homeowners is that one, which I showed you before up near the front. Um, she's got a lovely Baba Yaga. Welcoming Committee, which is definitely one that I'm going to be doing. Uh, which is cauldron a nice simple one well, I keep on now I'm not going to say a nice simple one there are no simple cross stitch patterns can I just say that every time I say simple one yeah no it gives me a nightmare <laughs> uh, what's this one cranium carnations I'm not sure about that one it's like how dark am I don't know uh, the dark deco pattern. I don't think I'll be doing this one. Although it is a Venus flytrap, maybe I think. So maybe I will. As a plant killer, um, skull in a jar. <coughs> this is haunted half. Uh, welcome to the sunroom. Mid-Century Haunted. This one's just called Witch's House. And the Creature Feature section. So you've got the Grim, of course, which I think I'll have to do. From what I can see, it's all DMC. Um, this one's, <laughs> I'm definitely doing this one, Gentle Monstrosity. I love spiders. So this one is definitely getting done. Um, isn't that beautiful? Love that one. Um, the White Rat, like I said, I'm doing the White Rat. Oops, it looks like we had the right page around. I'm definitely doing the critters. Some of these critters are definitely getting done. Hidden lodgings. I'm not sure about this one. I'm not a big rabbit fan. Uh, Doom and gloom. I think they might have to get done because they're just really cute. Maybe use like a glow in the dark thread, I think, instead of blank. And maybe use some etoll on that one. Then they've got the vintage Halloween page, which is so there's Fright Night. Shadows on the Moon, which I love this one. Like I said, there's quite a few in here. I think I'll be doing. Don't know when, but I will be doing them. Uh, trick or treat. Make sure the right side is showing this time. Both pages look nearly the same. Haunted Wings. Which I quite like. These are cool looking back, in all honesty. And I like the bit of moon. And the little skulls underneath them. I quite like that one. Um, 
So about the author, Lindsay is a part-time illustrator and fibre artist originally hailing from Denver, Colorado. When she's not drawing or designing cross-stitch patterns, Lindsay, enjoy Lindsay enjoys haunting thrift stores, searching for vintage picture frames and Halloween decor, watching sci-fi movies and television, she's a devoted Star Wars fan, drinking black coffee and surviving attacks from her demon feline little brother. One day she'd like to write a spooky children's book with cross-stitch illustrations. And, you know, it is a fantastic uh, book. So there's Lindsay with Little Brother. Um, so if you can get the book, you know, you can always ask at your local bookstore or have a, have a look online because it is a really fantastic, fantastic book to have. Um, I don't have a lot of cross-stitch books. I've got about, I think that makes five I think the other ones are in my other room. Now, the last thing, oh, actually two things. So there were some finishes that I did that I still needed to add things like beads or charms or stuff to before I could do anything to. So I've added the beads to the cat's eyes for this one and the bats. I've got beads on now. Um, this one needed beads down the side. So I've added some beads. You can't really tell though. Although they, they are there, trust me. <laughs> trust me, sewed them all on and gave the, the bat little googly eyes because he's funny and I like the bat. So I gave him googly eyes. This one, I might have to change the eyes because they're not... If I had glow-in-the-dark beads, which I'm still trying to get my hands on, um, I would have used glow-in-the-dark beads. And if I managed to get some <laughs> before I do anything with this, I'll be taking those beads off and putting the glow in the dark ones on. I added some little eyes to the cat. Little eyes to the spidey. There's our little spider. I added little blue lamp lights because it's a blue light disco. I don't know if you can see them. There we go. So little blue lights to the um, mansion. This one I added. Where did I add them? Oh, I just did little black beads in the middle of each of the flowers. So now they've got the black centre instead of them being red centred. So they've got just little black seed beads in there. This one, I just added the orange beads um, where the flowers are. Just to sort of finish it off. And of course, I added the spider. Because, you know, you can't have a spider web without a spider in it. So I just added this lovely little spider charm, which I got from AliExpress onto there. So she's ready to do something else with. And, oh, that's just something I've picked out. Okay, right, so that's pretty much it. Oh, remember how I said I was going through this and I'm undecided, blah, blah, blah. Well, unfortunately, there's one that I'm definitely decided on and I have moved it and moved it and moved it and moved it and moved it. Um, because... The thought, the thought of unpicking and frogging a page, a page worth of cross stitch. I'd rather be stitching, putting stitches in than taking stitches out, especially when there's that many. Um, maybe if it was only page one or page two, I might restart it. I accidentally stitched page five instead of page four. Um, I don't. I was using a smaller Q-snap, so I didn't realise until I took it out to move it. It wasn't. It wasn't working. Um. I mean, the thing is, it's a beautiful design. Um. So I'm just gonna excuse the noise. That's so the dimensions, Maggie the messmaker. And this cat made a major mess of this cat. So I'll show you what I've done so far. Um, 
and you will, you will see where the boo-boo is. And this is how frustrated I am because in all honesty, if somebody else wants to unpick it for me, I'll be very happy. Um, because of how much I've got done. There's only two, pa well, one and a half pages left to do for crying out loud. Um, oh yeah, so it was page... Ah, you'll see. Okay. So, the sewing machine's wrong. That whole, that whole piece... Let me just try and get it so it can still stay up. This whole part here is incorrect. It's in the wrong place. It's supposed to be over. So I'm thinking. I'm thinking very hard about this one. Because I've done so much of it. So, but it's been moving with me everywhere for the last six years since I made that mistake. You think after six years, maybe in any of my non-stitchy mojo time, I would have maybe unstitched it, but that probably would have made me want to stitch even less. Um, decisions. So, going forward, um, if we actually ever reach 100 subscribers, then I'm going to start uh, doing some giveaways of um, some of the excess stash that has been building up that I've just got in boxes now ready to rehome. Um, so please spread the word <laughs> um, and thank you very much for um, your comments and I do read them all so if you want to let me know anything or if you've got any suggestions um, of what you'd like to see and not see. You gonna come up and say hello? Monkey, you gonna come up and say hello? You gonna make me do it again? Really? You give me that look. Okay. Excuse me. Listen now to the wind, baby. Listen now to the rain. Coming up. Gonna feel that water. Honestly. He's a fan of Cold Chisel Bow River. I can sing a lot of other songs and he won't really come. But that one, he always comes. Um... So, yes, you, you're a weird cat. Um, so, yeah, so because of the way things are at work, although I've got one more week in the office and then it's four weeks working from home, so we'll see how we go next week. This week was just rather stressful, plus my study. Um, so I don't know if I will be posting a video next week. Might, might not. Um, if I do decide to dye some fabric, I'll try and remember to maybe film it or photo it or something so that I've got a little, maybe a little extra to put up. Um, but if you've got any questions about anything you've seen here or in any of the other floss tubes, um, just, you know, leave a comment down below. I'll try and leave as many links as I can down below. It just depends on how long it takes me. But if you've got any questions... Uh, just ask and I'll see what I can do. I'll put my email address down there. Come on, Bob. You can come up and say goodbye too. Oh, gee. Okay. Oh, thank goodness I've got a big chair. Um, but, yeah, just ask. I'm happy to, to answer any questions. Um, and, yeah, I thank all of those floss tubers that actually this week kept me quite sane. So, uh, especially to Vintage Stitcher. I love watching her. She is so chirpy. I loved her organisation of her um, of her, of her cupboard. Know where you. I know exactly how you feel. And even when it looks like it's organised, it's not. There's always those little bits and pieces that have to be done. The labels and and things like that. I'm the same. Trying to get this room organised. So totally feel you. Um, but it's lovely seeing you each morning. Um, you definitely give me a giggle and you give me some great ideas as well. You're the reason I, w I got hooked on the salt boxes through Pinker and Pumpkin. So I'm going to finish that salt box this afternoon. I'm going to decide which new start I'm going to do. Um, 
I have decided I've, I, I've sort of signed on to um, Magic Stitchdom and and things like that, and they've got so many challenges on there, and it's just like it's. I was going to try and, and start ones to you know to match the criteria for what's needed. I'm just going to keep on doing penalty stitching in all honesty, and if it meets the criteria you know of one that I've got that's a whip, then great. But I was starting to get to the point of choosing designs of of going to look seeking out designs that might fit the you know the category needed and I thought no no look, I'm not doing that not when there's the option to use penalties and just have to stitch you know twice as many stitches or something like that I'd rather do that than go and buy ones that may not be something that I would have picked anyway so whether there's going to be another one next week or not I don't know it just depends how this week goes and and how I get through it um will say I've got a great new manager he's really lovely and he's a giggle and um but we'll see how it goes. Next week we've got a new senior manager, you know, at, um, coming in because this one's just gone. Um, so who knows? Ouch! Who knows what changes she'll bring in? Um, which will just trigger stuff again. And so yes, yeah, so I get four weeks at home, and in that time I've got to apply for flexi work so that I can still work from home at least two days every week, uh, which will which will help my anxiety. Uh, to sort of stay relatively in control and still allow me to work um, and hopefully next weekend I'm getting my desk my craft space you know space so that I can actually you know set up a sewing machine because I, I went I did I did go to use it but then it's like well how do I do this when I haven't got anywhere to put my foot on the pedal because it's got a little foot pedal thingy and I sort of thought I don't want to use the little switch that's on the front of it that, um, you know, so you can do it that way instead of having to use the foot pedal because I sort of thought I won't click it off fast enough and my sewing will go all over the place. So I want a proper table to sort of work at. So um, that's hopefully going to be here, I'm going to say hopefully, uh, next weekend. And then I can finish setting up my my Zen room, my space. Um start looking at framing and hanging up stuff and that sort of thing so that's the goal for the next couple of weeks so whether there is going to be a floss tube in between if there is it'll be probably my shortest ever apart from when I did the quick walkthrough of you know when I first got my room because this one's gone on longer than I thought it would but there you go um so yeah so thank you very much for stopping by from me Bobby and Monkey Remember, march the beat of your own drum because that's where the magic happens. Catch you later. Toodles. Whoa!